Good morning to you. I am Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com here up in Stony Brook, New York. I'm up here for an emergency management conference that begins today with a talk that I will be doing. It goes for about three days, but I'm going to be starting off today with a talk at around 2.30. So that's why I'm up here. But it's time for the hurricane outlook and discussion. And on today's update, Adrian. And, of course, the Rocky reference there, Yo, Adrian. Yeah, had to do it. Uh, we do have Adrian. It is a hurricane in the eastern Pacific. It's not going to last very long. Uh, it's going to run into that colder water that I've been showing you out there, part of that cold negative PDO regime. So we'll look at Adrian, another system in the East Pack, and then a few odds and ends, some things that I'm looking at in the Atlantic that are kind of interesting. And then we're going to take a look down under at Australia. I'll show you what I mean about that as we progress. All right? Great to have you join me. Let's see what we've got. Here is Adrian out in the Eastern Pacific, Category 1 now. Forecast takes it along to the west-northwest, eventually getting into that colder water out here, the negative PDO or Pacific Decadal Oscillation doing its thing. So we're not going to see one of these long track systems that just goes on for days and days, racking up ACE points, accumulated cyclone energy points, not going to be able to do it very efficiently. Looking at the National Hurricane Center, some of the data from there, top winds on Adrian, 75 miles per hour, 989 millibars. Of course, all of this is estimated using sophisticated satellite techniques. Then we have another area over here, Eastern Pacific Invest Area 92. I love how they demarcate that or, or note it in the uh, Tropical Weather Outlooks. EP92, you see it down there. And same thing for the Atlantic. It would be an AL93 or whatever. We just call them 93L for short. But that's pretty cool how they do that. Anyway, this has about a 90% chance of development in the development area, in case you're wondering, looks something like that. Meanwhile, in the Atlantic Basin, what's up with these two X's? I thought maybe it was a mistake. This would be the remnants of Cindy. Not going to do anything. But then there's another disturbance over here. Probably not going to do anything either. But they are out there. Disturbed weather exists. There's shipping interest, of course. National Hurricane Center has responsibility for all of the maritime interests out there. They also work with the Tropical Analysis and Forecast Branch down at the Hurricane Center in Miami. So it's important to note when there is any area of you know significant weather over our maritime waters, right? Right. So that's the forecast area where this might develop, but, I mean, the computer models just really aren't seeing it. Upper-level winds aren't very favorable, and there's just not much there to work with overall. So here's some of the track guidance and whatnot on Adrian. Here's the National Hurricane Center um, track map embedded into Dr. Cowan's page here. This is the center fix, etc. And then here are some of your models, your typical cluster of models there, and you can develop uh, kind of an envelope of guidance out of it. And they are in pretty good agreement overall. The models are that Adrian will move away from Mexico out into the open Pacific and not be uh, of any consequence for anybody, except any marine interests that are out there. There could be some ships. You never know. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the East Pack, we do have 92E, and it's forecast to be closer to the Mexican coastline as it tries to develop, but it, too, will eventually run into that colder water that is waiting up here. So the East Pack may be getting busy, but these systems are going to get kind of cut off at the knees, if you will, and not have a long time to fester and become anything too powerful. So I think that's interesting overall. Satellite animation of our features. Here we have Adrian, now a hurricane. This is 92E over here. And then pretty much everything else is nice and calm. Strong upper level winds cutting across this area. You can really see that easily on the satellite animation. There is a tropical wave moving through here. We'll look at that in closer detail in just a moment. And um, this is the messy weather, unsettled weather, however you want to call it, that the Hurricane Center is watching in the Atlantic Basin. And you can literally see the outline of this ridiculous heat dome sitting over a good deal of Mexico and the southern United States that have been giving the sweltering, ridiculous heat index values. I was speaking with my good friend and colleague, Greg Nordstrom, down in Gulfport, Mississippi last night. And he said that the low temperatures, the low temperatures, and you people out in the southwest are going to be like, whatever. But the low temperatures, wait for it, let me get there, um, are like in the low 80s. 
And again, here in Phoenix and Tucson, Death Valley, some of your low temperatures can be 90, but you don't have a dew point of 81. If you did, everybody would be dead, probably. Uh, it's just ridiculous how hot it has been in that area, and it's expanding. I know this is supposed to be basically the hurricane outlook and discussion, but remember, heat is energy. Hurricanes take advantage of that energy. There's a lot of latent heat down there, and Greg pointed out something very important. The high dew points that we're seeing are because that moisture layer is very thick. It's not a little shallow area of moisture that can just be scoured out with a sea breeze or whatever. It's very thick in the atmosphere, and that's coming from the very warm Gulf of Mexico, of course, and partially because of the very warm overall Atlantic. Everything's just warmer and more moist, more humid, more energy available than what we are used to seeing. All right, moving on more to the east now. This is what we call the true color shot. I use this on this part of the world because the sun has been up long enough. What a beautiful animation. Really nice to see. There's your intertropical convergence zone. Dry air dominating out here with some African dust, but nothing significant, certainly nothing overwhelming, but enough to keep things in check for now. There's this tropical wave. You can even almost see the look of it, why it's called a tropical wave. That is currently moving through the eastern Caribbean. This is our suspect area that won't amount to much uh, north and east of the Caribbean. Now let's zoom in via a radar. I know I've heard from Timothy down here and Brent. We have several of our supporters. Uh, Carlos over in Puerto Rico. Yes, a few showers around. You take anything that you can get at this point, I'm sure. If we zoom in here. All right, Timothy, Tim Olive down here, Charlotte, Amali area. Maybe you're getting some rain. We shall see uh, over towards parts of the uh, British Virgin Islands. I'm waiting for the this weather service radar. Look, i got to tell you, it's not very good. Uh, come on. Come on, we can do better than that. I'll have to just X this out because this is eating up my resources. <laughs> Pretty sad there, huh? i got to get radar scope on this machine, I guess. Uh, or maybe I can get, get Dr. Mark Nissenbaum to make a radar section on uh, that awesome site that he has. I was trying to show you the animation down there. That's okay. Uh, hopefully we can get that tropical wave to bring some much-needed rain to parts of the Northeast Caribbean. Fingers crossed, both of them, or all four, as it were, right? All right, so look, you can see the moisture in the GFS here. Let's use a color little pop better. I guess we can use blue. That should do nicely. So there's that tropical wave moving through the Caribbean. Now, this is the relative humidity at 700 to 300 millibars of the atmosphere, so a decent layer there. This is the disturbed weather that the Hurricane Center is watching. And then this is just your, you know, you say, well, Mark, you said it was humid. Yes. It's more down towards the low levels, but it's thick, very thick. And uh, it, you know the, the mid-levels are dry, but down towards the lower levels, below 700 millibars, you know, we're talking the lower 7,000 feet or so, just sultry as can be. Meanwhile, a little pocket of energy out here and moisture, but everything else pretty dry coming off of Africa, the Saharan air layer, doing its work even if it is not very dusty. Let's put this into motion and see how things progress. Nothing really happens. Maybe a little bit of a low pressure develops here near Bermuda, just east of it. But 1013 millibars, nah, that's not going to be anything to worry about. That's for sure. And uh, as we just progress through time, there's day four, five, six, and then finally seven. A full week out, the Atlantic Basin behaving itself overall. All right, a couple things that I wanted to point out to you because this was pointed out to me on Twitter recently by a couple of people. I appreciate that. They know who they are. Uh, the SOI, I haven't looked at this in a long time. I just kind of assumed that it had tanked and that it helped to lead to the El Nino, which was true. It did tank, but it has made quite the dramatic comeback. Look at this. This is going back almost a month, and this is your 30-day right here. And it had dropped pretty significantly to like close to minus 20. And the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia, hence the, hey, we're going to go down under reference when I started today's update. Bureau of Meteorology typically says when we're at minus 7 on the SOI that we are in El Nino threshold numbers. The SOI, a measure 
of the pressure dis uh, differences between Tahiti and Darwin out in the southwestern tropical Pacific. So we tanked it out here. But then look what happened. It's come back up so that the 30-day average now is above that seven minus seven threshold. So it has come up. In fact, we have gained 10 points since the May 30-day average. All right, that's very interesting. And today's contributors, you know, a little paltry there, 1.41. Now, the 90-day is much more important. It really is. And it's pretty close to that minus 7. So we want to be fair here and not blow this out of proportion that, oh, the SOI is coming up and that's the end of El Nino. The 90-day has been pretty steady at about minus 7, roughly. And so we're in that weak El Nino state. But this is where I do find the interesting part. The 90-day hasn't crashed. It's been pretty steady for about a month, and we have not seen the El Nino strengthen very much over the last month. Just a steady, gradual increase in the warmth of the tropical Pacific. That is interesting because to get a strong El Nino before the peak of hurricane season, it's going to have to kick into high gear. And with SOI numbers like this, I don't see that happening anytime over the next several weeks. And we're almost to July, for goodness sakes. Speaking of July, we are in July on these Havmolar diagrams. i got to pick a color that will pop. I guess black will. Um, so this is easterly wind all through here. Some westerlies over here. And then as we look out into time, speaking of July, here's the future down here. Mostly blues in here. No big areas of red like these guys. These are way over like not even in the INSO regions to be even concerned with. What I'm looking for are solid areas kind of like this that would be happening, like replace this blue with that, and then we would be really strengthening that uh, El Nino through westerly wind bursts. But the SOI, this is where it's all related, it has to tank big time. Typically that's a harbinger that you're going to get a big westerly wind burst across the Pacific because the pressure pattern changes from easterlies to more westerlies because the air flows from areas of higher pressure to lower pressure. We're just not seeing that, not in the SOI data, and we're not seeing it in these Havmolar diagrams going into, I mean, even the mid part of July. And then that all, of course, relates to this, which we've shown many, many, many times I think this just stays pretty much status quo, gradually strengthening maybe that cold PDO still there, and then the very warm Atlantic still there, and we're just waiting. You know, Once we get to August, and we're about a month away from that, things could get really, really interesting in the Atlantic Basin overall. All right, as I wrap it up, I want to remind you, head over to hurricanetrack.com, our website, and get our tracking map. Big old poster size, just click that. You go to the ordering page through PayPal. I'll fold it up, put it in a nice big envelope, and send it to you. And you can have your own. It's big. It's a nice poster. And, of course, we do have our store over at Hurricane Track at the Teespring. Some winter weather gear if you're wanting to get that and at least feel cool. <laughs> hey, look, you can you can always fantasize about winter, right? I mean, it's 110 heat index out there. And then, of course, we have a bunch of Hurricane seasonal related gear as well our good buddy cj put this together you can click on the store right there ht store and get you some hurricane track merchandise or merch as the big youtubers call it right we're getting there and speaking of that i do want to again express my appreciation for everybody that's been subscribing to the channel lately getting the views up you know it doesn't boost my ego uh, it's just a wonderful thing that people are interested in what I have to say. So it's not an ego thing. I mean, yeah, it's neat to have thousands of people care about what you do, but it's not about that. It's about, hey, I want to share my passion with you guys, and I appreciate that uh, on some of these videos, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 people, and there was that one El Nino video back a few months ago that for whatever reason, like lightning struck, and it had over 140,000 views, that's great. It really means a lot to me. It certainly does. So if you're new and you haven't subscribed yet on YouTube, go ahead and do it. Hit that notification button, as they say, or the bell, so you get notified when I post a video. And uh, I'm also trying to respond to people more in the comments. 
I just think that's important. I hate it when I see people on Twitter and elsewhere post something, especially when it's inflammatory, and then they just run away like they left a smoking you know, bonfire and are not going to be responsible for putting it out, so to speak. Now, I don't post stuff like that, but I'm just saying engagement is important, and I appreciate interacting with each and every one of you as best I can. All right, let's get this online for you, then i got to get ready to go do my talk over at Stony Brook University. I am Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com. Good to see you all. I'll be back with another update for you tomorrow.